Hello, I'm Armin Budish. Welcome to Golden Opportunities. Today, it's not too soon to talk about 2013 taxes. We'll take a look at the tax landscape. If you suffer from sleep apnea, when you snooze, you lose. We'll offer winning advice. Plus, we'll meet a chief of police who found being an internet sensation was just the ticket to write up his well-grounded observations. And does it even make sense to work to supplement your Social Security benefits? It's time to get GOing, so pull up a chair and join us at our kitchen table for golden opportunities. Approaching the end of life is never easy, but veterans can face even more challenges than others during this difficult time. Veterans have unique and many times traumatic experiences from their time in service that need special attention. And they can get that attention through a unique program called Peaceful and Proud at the Hospice of Western Reserve. Don Stark is a Vietnam combat veteran who served in the U.S. Marine Corps and now is a volunteer with the program. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much for the invite. And thank you for your service. Well, thank you. Give us an overview of the Peaceful and Proud Veterans Program at the hospice. The initiative started about uh, five years ago, and um, it is going around the country now in uh, different hospices, but uh, we are, we're five years <laughs> old with it. Um, we pretty much uh, find the uh, uh, veterans at uh, a lot of events, community events, and, uh, and also through our hospice program. Um, what do you do for veterans? Well, we do a number of things. Um, we, I sit with veterans, uh, end-of-life veterans. In fact, I've uh, sat with uh, Korean veterans, Vietnam veterans, and World War II veterans. Um, um, they've become uh, very close to me, and I just uh, sit with them and, and chat and give them uh, um, a shoulder to, uh, you know, to a comrade in arms. So it's a companionship, it's comfort. Correct. Um, and these are for people who are at the Hospice of Western Reserve? Either at the hospice or, or in a, uh, um, a hospital or a uh, nursing facility or at home. We have home teams as well that we go into the uh, patients' homes. We do respite for uh, so mom can get out or, or dad can get out and do shopping, those kinds of things. Uh, and you, you do a whole lot of other things. I, I understand that things like um, uh, legacy work, uh, uh, scrapbooks, and right. helping people memorialize their lives. Right. And it's, uh, it's pretty well scripted for us, but we could sit down and I can ask you, you know, well, Armin, what do you think about this? And, uh, and uh, tell me, what, uh, how would you like to be remembered in, in, the, in this for your family? And, uh, and, and now you're a volunteer in this program, and others in the program are volunteers. Correct. And I, volunteers who have been in the service before. Right. Well, not all of us are, vol are, are veterans, but uh, the, pretty much what we do is we find the veterans at, uh, and, uh, through the uh, questionnaires when we... Can you give a personal uh, example of something, someone you've helped? Something sure. I had a, uh, a gentleman who became a, a, a dear friend, uh, a Korean War veteran. Uh, he... Uh, uh, we sat at his kitchen table for the better part of a year and uh, discussed uh, things that he never spoke with uh, with his family. Um, he had things about uh, his service. About his service, uh, what transpired, what Some he of the saw, the horrors that he saw, what he what he saw, what he felt. Uh, that uh, you know, uh, a lot of us uh, don't want to share that with uh, with mom or you know with uh, with uh, our uh, spouse or and uh, the, we see it every day. And Can you uh, provide support for people who are not in hospice yet? who are not going through that yes. end of life experience? Yes, we can. Uh, it's, uh, we see, we're out in the community and we see, uh, we'll, we'll do uh, veteran pinnings. I think I may have mentioned to you this pin. We mm -hmm. do uh, pins for uh, um, thank you. It's, it's a thank you for your service. Uh, I know that you're aware that uh, most Vietnam veterans were uh, we were on the short end of the stick, which is, uh, it's unfortunate, but that's what happened. And that's, uh, you know, that's all, that's bygone, so we're trying to fix that. We're just so we're going to give a phone number. Uh, can, can veterans who would like to uh, participate in a pinning program, for example, call and, uh, sure. and be honored in that way? Most definitely, and or we can let them know where we are having 
communal uh, pinnings. Uh, I mentioned one. We've got one coming up in uh, October that's uh, got over 100 people that are going to be pinned. So. And, and just so our viewers know, if anybody would like to be a volunteer, you can use more volunteers as well. We certainly can. And it's we're going to give a phone number for that same number. That'd be terrific. Great. Thank, thank you for coming in and thank sharing. You it's very a great much. program you're doing. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. Again, thank you for your service. All right. This is a wonderful and a very important program. To find out more about it or to find out how you can become a volunteer, call the Hospice of the Western Reserve at 800-707-8922 or log on to www.hospicewr.org. My thanks to Don for volunteering to come on the show today to share this great opportunity. Next, timely tax tips. But first, she wanted to be alone. So this famous face resided as a recluse and made herself at home with the new name of Harriet Brown. Can you identify her true identity? We'll name names when we return. I know the devastating effects that back pain can have not just on you, but your entire family. Instead of covering up your pain with drugs or surgery, we offer a procedure called non-surgical decompression. Decompression increases spinal disc space and it draws nutrients back into the disc. This allows healing to take place from the inside out. So if you're suffering with chronic pain, there is hope. I invite you to call our office to see if this proven treatment option can mean freedom from your pain. From the 1940s to the 1990s in New York, if you chatted with a woman named Harriet Brown, you could accurately proclaim Garbo Talks. Using the pseudonym Harriet Brown enabled cinema celebrity Greta Garbo to avoid admirers and remain anonymous. A year ago at this time, we were waiting and wondering how Congress would reshape tax rates, tax deductions, tax credits. Well, a year later, the shape is now clearer. To describe this new tax landscape is an artist of accountants, Sanford Tratto. Sanford's a certified public accountant with the Line Weaver Financial Group. Thanks for joining us, Sanford. Thanks for having me. All right, so we have lots of changes to cover. Let's start with income tax brackets. Certainly. If you recall, about a year ago, a big question was tax rates as we entered 2013. And like many of the changes, they affect the higher income earners. And those earners would be uh, over $200,000. As an end result, we obtained a new tax uh, bracket of 39.6%. OK. Um, payroll taxes, tell us about that. Well, no surprise there. As we came to an end of 2012, we knew that uh, the 2% reduction in Social Security rate for employees was going to go away, and that's exactly what happened. The rate went up, and employees' net income went down. So all of us working folks are paying 2% more, basically. Correct. Yes. All right. Capital gains taxes, which are basically the tax we pay when we sell something like a stock. It goes up in value. We make a profit. Correct. Uh, the new law preserved the tax be, uh, favorability of long-term uh, rates, uh, gains, as well as qualified dividends. And so um, those rates, as a reminder, of the, uh, I'm sorry, they do not benefit uh, those in the 39.6% rate, uh, the, the favorable rates. Um, so the wealthier, the higher income people uh, now pay more capital gain tax. Yes. The, just as a, a refresher, the rates are 0% for those at the 10% and 15% level and 15% for those at the 25 to 35% level and then 20% for those in the new 39.6% rate. All right. So uh, for most of us that are under $200,000 of income, we pay the same capital gains tax rate as we've been paying. And, Correct. And yes. if we're very low income, 10, 15%, we pay no capital gain tax. Correct. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, Medicare surtax. Tell us about that. Well, that's a new tax that's, again, going to affect those who are high income earners. And uh, high income earners being those over 200,000, generally speaking. And uh, it's a new 3.8% uh, rate on net investment income and then a 0.9% rate on compensation over 200,000. Okay. Now, this additional tax that higher income people are going to pay. Does that money go into the Medicare program to help shore it up? 
the whole intent is for the 0.9% uh, the to That's go the towards purpose. that. Whether that happens, we'll see. Well, <laughs> uh, itemized deductions, those are changing too, right? C correct. Congress didn't focus just on income. They looked at deductions as well. And so the high income earners are going to see the benefit of some of their itemized deductions go away. And that haircut will be about 3% of any excess over the thresholds. And those th thresholds are about 250 for single filers and 300 for joint filers. So they took down the value of our credits. Correct. And it can't exceed 20% of total itemized deductions. Now, uh, this is all complicated, I think, to our viewers. And, you know, when, anytime you talk numbers, it gets complicated. Where can we go for more information? You can come to Lineweaver and call uh, Lineweaver Financial Services, and we can ask, um, ha handle any questions that they might have. And, and you've got a couple of uh, seminars, I think, which we're putting up on the screen here. Uh, is there a charge to come to those seminars nope, on December 10th or 12th? They are free, and, and as they note, December 10th, 12th, and you can call the number on the screen, and we can help you out. Great. Thank you for the information. Appreciate that. As you can see, the tax landscape has undergone major changes. To better understand how you can navigate the new turf, give Sanford a call. His number's up next. For more information, call the Lineweaver Financial Group at 1-888-313-4009 or log on to www.lineweaver.net. Next, a wake-up call about sleep apnea. Looking for places to go, things to do? Welcome to our community calendar. The trial of the 19th century just may have been in Paris, where a Jewish army officer was falsely charged with treason and then sentenced to life on Devil's Island. The Maltz Museum of Jewish Heritage explores this miscarriage of justice in a dramatic exhibition, Traitor, Spies, Lies, and Justice Denied, The Dreyfus Affair. To determine more details, call 216-593-0575. And to find more facts, visit www.maltzmuseum.org. A body at rest remains at rest, unless you have sleep apnea. Then there's no rest for the weary. And it's not just your sleep that's affected. Jan Steiner's here to tell us how sleep apnea affects your overall health. Jan's a nurse practitioner with pulmonary medicine at Metro Health. Thanks for joining us, Jan. Nice to be here. So, Jan, first, remind us what sleep apnea is. Sleep apnea involves pauses in the breathing during sleep that occur repetitively throughout the night. They can occur uh, as often as 150 times an hour. And uh, the repercussions of that, I mean, what are the implications? There's far-reaching implications. Uh, the most obvious and direct problems are related to attention, attentiveness, and excessive sleepiness. So we see that uh, people with this untreated uh, disorder are three times likelier to have a motor, motor vehicle accident. They also have an increased rate of industrial accidents and so wow. forth. So that's the, the one that's uh, obvious. Uh, uh, there, there's other things that can remain hidden for years when the disorder remains untreated for years. Uh, it, it can surface uh, manifest as problems with heart disease, uh, hypertension, uh, cognition, thinking, memory problems, and uh, a greatly increased risk of stroke. And it's all from just stopping breathing because of the sleep apnea well, in the middle of the night? A, a cascade of events occurs when you stop breathing. Uh, the first thing that happens is your blood oxygen level starts to drop, and your body perceives that uh, something is, uh, has gone awry and it sort of alerts you and alarms you that something is awry, uh, prepare to fight or flee. And this sympathetic tone that gets ratcheted up during these episodes causes problems with the heart and so forth. Do we know we have it because we're waking up in the middle of the night? I mean, is that, that how we know? That may be one of the signs, although there are other things that can 
fragment sleep and cause frequent awakenings. Is snoring, that a sign of sleep apnea? That is something that we should look a little bit deeper to, especially loud snoring. I ask my patients or I ask their uh, spouses, can your snoring be heard throughout the house? And it's surprising how many people say, yes, I can hear about him. throughout the street? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how do we fix this? If we have it, how do we well, fix it? There's several treatment options. Currently, the most effective treatment option is is applying some air pressure to the upper airway to hold the upper airway open. That's the basic problem. And there's a machine that happens. does that. Yeah, there's and that's a, called? There, there are several types. The most basic uh, that we often use is called a CPAP machine. And you wear that during night? You wear a interface, a device. Is that on like, your face. looks like a gas mask? Sort well, of some, but there are other options that have developed in the past few years that are uh, much simpler to apply, uh, don't leak as much, and uh, go on just a matter of seconds they can be applied and effectively treat sleep apnea. And if, if you have to get one of these machines, um, is that paid for by Medicare? Yeah. Insurance will pay for it. Medicare will pay for the sleep study. The sleep study is needed to get the uh, treatment. And A sleep uh, study means you go to the hospital and sleep you sleep is, there and they watch you. Well, we do have a lab in the hospital, but we have several labs throughout the area uh, hmm. in hotel suites that we oh, rent really? and modify into sleep labs. I'd uh, pick like the Ritz or something. Yeah. Well, we have a Marriott. That <laughs> a Marriott's very good. Nice. I like Patients Marriott. oftentimes don't want to leave in the morning. They <laughs> like it so much. Well, thank you for the okay. information. Appreciate that very much. My pleasure. There's nothing like a good night's sleep, but if you have sleep apnea, you have nothing like a good night's sleep. To restore your rest, follow Jan's advice and seek treatment, and then use it. My thanks to Jan for sharing such eye-opening information. Find out more by calling Metro Health at 216-778-7800 or visit www.metrohealth.org. Want more Metro Health medical information? Be sure to tune in to WTAM 1100 Radio each Saturday morning at 7 for Metro Health and You, hosted by Dr. Christine Alexander. Next, see why everyone's raving about his rants. It's time to get up and go, an exercise minute on golden opportunities. Hello everybody, I'm Mike Carbon from Breakout Fitness and today we're going to show you how to work the shoulders and more importantly the triceps in the back of our arm. You ready to go? I don't know. All right, <laughs> we have our chairs here. This is all you're going to need at the house. If you have a chair with arms on it, that's preferable. If not, you can use the sides or the front of a bench or chair. What we're going to do is we're going to have our heels out in front of us. We're going to maintain good posture throughout this exercise. We want to make sure we can grab the handles of the chair. Now, all we're going to want to do is using our upper body only, we're going to simply push ourselves out of the chair and then slowly lower ourselves, okay? So we're looking for 12 to 15 repetitions here, at least two to three sets as we push ourselves in and out. Try not to use your legs. They should just be out there for balance. How you feeling? It's easier if you stay on the chair. <laughs> Come on now, you push yourself out all the way. Ah, oh, there you go, there's one. Fabulous It's job. one long one. How's That's that? right, 12 to 15 of those and you'll be on your way to stronger triceps. So now it's your turn to get up and go. For your copy of the exercise booklet, please send $1 for postage to Golden Opportunities, 23240 Chagrin Boulevard, Suite 450, Beachwood, Ohio, 44122. He's a chief of police and an internet sensation. Now you normally don't hear those two descriptions in the same sentence, much less about the same person. But Chief David Oliver is exceptional in many ways, as demonstrated on the Brimfields Police Department's Facebook page and in his new book, No Mopes Allowed. The Chief's here today to tell the tale of how he remains serious about crime while keeping a sense of humor. Thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure. So you started a Facebook page a few years ago. Tell us about that. Well, originally we started the page to, to kind of reach out to, to the community. I thought a lot of people were on social media, a lot of smartphones being used. And I thought if there was a way to connect with the community uh, and get them information, timely, relevant, um, you know, roads are closed, those kind of things, that it would be fantastic. Um, Anybody looking at the page now? 
Anybody right now looking at the page? Anybody? Yeah, we, I mean, do you have? Uh, <laughs> we have ninety. Th we have ninety thousand likes on our page. Ninety thousand yeah. likes. Yeah, the the international. I think my personal page has about two, so that's <laughs> not bad. <laughs> the International Association of Chiefs of Police ranks uh, Facebook pages uh, for police departments in the United States, and the rankings right now are in New York City. Brimfield, Boston, <laughs> Philadelphia, Chicago. So I think we're doing okay. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. All right, and you wrote a book. The title is No Mopes Allowed. What's what's a mope? Well, a mope. <laughs> who is a mope? Who uh, is a mope? Yeah, a, a mope is a who. Um, it's it's a it's an old police term, and it, it very simply is a criminal, someone who uh, takes from us and and uh, is usually engaged in criminal activity. It's not designated to any socio uh, socioeconomic status or any race or any sex, gender, anything like that. Bernie Madoff is a mope. Um, okay. So it, it, it goes that high. Now, uh, the posts you do on your page, a lot of them talk about daily life in the police department, but then you write letters to mopes, too. And, I do. And, 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 <laughs> What kind of messages? You know, we just try to, to keep the, the common theme. Um, I've written them to, to meth manufacturers, drug users, drug dealers. Uh, the theme is uh, don't do it here. We, we want a community that is safe to live in. Brimfield is just a, a great community, and we want to keep it that way. We, we, we want a community that's safe to work in, live in, visit, shop. Um, and so we're very direct. We don't want we don't want you there. But the the, the the thing that attracts people to your web page is your sense of humor. You have a great <laughs> sense of humor. Give us an example of, of how you use that humor in a, in Facebook postings. Well, we had uh, probably one of the posts that got the most reaction was the uh, the intoxicated male who ended up outside of my office one morning. Uh, he was holding a can of beer. I just happened to look out the window and he was standing there. And that's, I think that's what's good about our page is that I just tell the story. I let people see what we see and hear what we hear. Uh, and he was standing outside uh, with a can of beer and I walked out to talk to him and he said, uh, I'm here to meet a girl. And I said, well, uh, you're, you're here to meet a girl? And he said, yeah, she's a prostitute, but don't tell anyone. And I, I have my $20, and I want to see her. Now, he's standing right in front of a police car, and I'm in full uniform. So I said, sir, do you realize that you're uh, at a police department? And he said, I am. And I said, I'm a policeman. There's a car. And then he said a few expletives and asked me if he was under arrest. So I thought that was important to convey that, you know, those are the kind of things we see. And the humorous posts that you make on your page are true. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're, <laughs> you couldn't make it up. Well, and, and I know you do all kinds of public service, and your book is great, and we're going to show the book again. I just want to thank you for coming out here and, I appreciate and talking you. to us. I appreciate you having me. Chief, thank and, you. And thank you for not giving me any tickets today. <laughs> if our arresting conversation with the chief hasn't clicked your curiosity, the book's subtitle will surely nab you. A small town police chief rants and babbles about hugs and high fives, meth bus, internet celebrity, and other adventures. It's a great peek inside police work, written with humor and heart. And I never thought I'd say this, but my thanks to Chief Oliver for throwing the book at me. We'll be back. To order No Mopes Allowed from Gray & Company Publishers, click to www.grayco.com slash no mopes or call 1-800-915-3609. Next, when will working cost you money? They haven't been inducted to a Hall of Fame. They don't get stopped for autographs or photos. They don't have entourages or shoe deals. But they still deserve our applause and admiration. Because they are fighters. Believers. Heroes. We are the Metro Health System. We are the proud sponsor of the comeback. If you can't quite make ends meet based on your Social Security benefits alone, you may be thinking about taking a job to supplement your income. Does it make sense or CENTS to work and take Social Security? Here with the answer is my law partner, who always makes sense, Mike Solomon. Thanks for joining hey, us, Mike. Everybody. So if we work well on Social Security, do we lose some of our benefits? Well, it depends on what age you are. If you hit the, the normal retirement age, it, which is for most of us now, age 66, once you hit 66, whatever you earn is free. It doesn't impact your Social Security. If you, earn, if you retire prior to age 66, then your earnings could impact how much Social Security you get. So what's the rule before 66? Well, 
if you, let's say uh, you start uh, your retirement at age 62, which for many people can start as early as age 62, then their benefit, you know, their Social Security benefit is cut back. And in, in, in prior shows we've talked about that. We've recommended that as long as you can wait, the better off you are because your Social Security benefit is better. But if you do uh, start earlier than age 66, you can earn the first $15,120 without impacting your Social Security. After that, it'll start cutting it back. All right, and when you say cut it back, is it a dollar you lose for every, what, $2? That's right. Every $2 you earn above that $15,120, you lose a, a dollar of your Social Security benefit. Okay, give us an example how that would work. Okay, let's say you're age 63 and you elect early retirement and you're getting uh, you know, $800 a month from Social Security, or that's $9,600 a year. And then you earn $23,120, that's $8,000 above the amount you're allowed to earn. Then when you lose $2, uh, excuse me, $1 of Social Security for every $2 you're above, you're 8,000 above, means you lose 4,000 of Social Security, so it drops from 9,600 to 5,600. You're still right. making more than if you did nothing, but, but you've, you've cut back. All right, so the 4,000 that you've lost, is that gone, period, gone forever? No, here's the good news. A lot of people don't realize this. First of all, when you hit age 66, you, you jump back to your normal retirement benefit, and then they recalculate it. And they recalculate it so that all that money that you lost over the years that you had to give up, you get back over a period of time. Really? Yeah, you so get it back. Not right. bad. Not too bad at all. All right. Thank you, Mike. Good right. information. I don't think a lot of people understand that they would actually get that money back. Yes. So should you work and take Social Security at the same time? The longer you can delay starting your benefits, the better. But take your benefits if you need the money. And if you need to work to supplement that income, go ahead and do it. Yes, you will lose some of your benefits at that time, but eventually you'll get them back. My thanks to Mike Solomon for giving us the benefit of his advice. Call Butish, Solomon, Steiner, and Peck at 1-888-236-5173 for more information or to schedule a speaker for your organization. Or log on to www.butishandsolomon.com. Thanks for joining us today. On next week's show, we'll man up to share important information about men's health. Then the holidays can bring us happiness and we have ways to unwrap a beautiful smile. And it's easy to see how essential your eyes are for daily life. We'll look into the near future to see a visionary treatment for cataracts. Until then, please remember, make the most of your golden opportunities. Would you like to join our kitchen conversation? All you have to do is call toll-free 1-877-765-1543 and leave us your question, name, and phone number. Or log on to www.golden.tv for all the latest information and show updates. opportunities